Did you know that when applying the Lumilor paint system, you could be creating weak points that act like unwanted fuses? Hi, I'm Pete from Paint With Light, and this is Lumilor A to Z. Lumilor paint can have weak points, fault lines, or sometimes referred to it as fuses that do tend to burn within the system. Now, when you apply paint, it naturally tends to have thinner spots um, in the application um, due to the nature of the paint of when it's being applied and how it's being applied. Most of the time around edges, uh, when you apply paint, paint normally hits and rolls off the edge. So it hits and rolls off the edge. So that edge there where you're painting is gonna naturally have a thinner amount of paint along that edge there because when you paint it, it hits and tends to roll off, hit and roll off. So those areas do create thin areas in the system, um, which usually tend to be more resistive. Um, and electricity, it, electricity likes to find the least path of resistance first, so most of the time it's gonna go there and burn. Um, but those are fuses and fault lines within the system. <clears throat> now, those thin areas, they cannot support the voltage or the current wanting to go through. Um, and that area where it is thinner around the edges or in creases, um, it will tend to burn similar to a fuse. The way a fuse works, um, you have your current going through and it's a basically a little tiny device with a small piece of wire in it that is more resistive than what's around it. And when the voltage or current exceeds what that fuse allows, the little piece in there burns. Same thing with the, the Lumilor system around the edges uh, or corners when you apply the paint it hits and rolls those edges are going to be thinner more resistive and possibly tend to burn one of the most important issues or most common issues within the lumilor system besides the connection sites are wraparound edges or corners um, because once again these places tend to be thinner with paint more resistive less parts of the system there. It can create proper insulation, all kinds of different things and tend to burn in those areas. So where we know these weak points to be um, already in the system is in the backplane edge. In the videos or when you do your application, we teach to cut down the edge of the backplane after you unmask it because the edge of the paint that goes up against the uh, edge of the tape does leave a sharp edge after you pull the tape. So you need to sand that off and that is would be a fault line or you would be creating a fuse along that edge if you don't sand that down uh, because of proper insul uh, improper insulation around that edge. So that's an area where we know where we could be creating a fault or, or a weak point in the system already as exists that we know. Um, another one would be a JB weld patch that you're going to put connectors on or have a bridge um, to fill in two panels and you want to keep your line path going up over but you don't want to go over the edges so you're going to fill that in and create a bridge in a sense. But um, JB weld pads because if you let them dry a little bit too hard before you pull the tape um, it creates a hard edge on the edge of the, the JB pad. <clears throat> and that too is, once again, it creates a point, an edge, where paint hits and rolls off of that. Um, and another one would be a wraparound edge when you're going to be lighting up uh, an image or something on top of the substrate and you want to hide the connectors in the back, you would most likely do a wraparound. Uh, sometimes you can do a drill through, but sometimes your substrate doesn't allow that. So if you do a wraparound to do your connectors on the back, where it wraps around most of the time it's plastic metal anything like that it's going to have a sharper point on that edge and when you apply paint once again it's going to hit and roll hit and roll so on that sharper edge there's going to be less amount of paint there um, but that's where another section would be that we would find these um, weak points or fault lines within the system to solve these problems um, that could be created and if you take care of them beforehand they're not going to be problems later on so in the JB weld patches okay always make sure 
once you mix it up, once you have it taped off and you apply your JB onto the substrate, make sure it's nice and flat so you can put your connectors on or anything like that or whatever you're doing with your JB weld, making a bridge um, or filling in a gap. Always make sure as it's still a little wet and as you've already flattened it off or whatever you need to do, pull that tape right away as soon as you can. Because what's going to happen is in the JB weld, when you pull the tape, the edges are still going to melt down and weigh down and actually give themselves a naturally rounded off edge if you pull the tape as soon as it's still wet. If you pull it when it's drier, it's already kind of set in its place and you pull it and you're cutting it and you're making a hard edge. And it's very difficult to get rid of that later unless you sand it down or something, but you usually don't know that's there. Um, until after you apply the system, turn it on, and <clears throat> maybe it burns along that edge and you got to go back and fix it. So um, around the JB weld sides is pull the tape and it will uh, naturally give you a rounded edge. But if you want, and let's say it does dry a little bit too quick or um, you kind of wait too long and it does dry on you a little bit, <clears throat> you could actually take rubbing alcohol, IPA, um, and smooth it back down. It's got to still be a little soft and malleable, but you need to smooth that down in order to make a transition for it to flow down and have your um, conductive paint come up over and onto the JB Weld connection site. You don't want it to have that hard edge where you create, once again, a fault line. Um, for the actual wraparound edges, if it's plastic, Take 220 grit, um, something along those lines, and actually round off the edge with your sandpaper. And you can do it from the actual hard angle of it, start there, and then sand all the way around. And what you only want to do is a small area to allow for your connection paths to go up in that area. So be, be the judge of it, however, your path needs, however wide your path needs to be times two for a backplane and bus bar or however many fields you're doing, make sure that edge where you're going to run that wrap around is completely rounded off. Because if not, you're going to create a fault line. It's going to burn. It's going to cut out. You're not even going to know what happened, where it happened. Um, but that will basically help you with the rounded edges there. If it's a metal substrate and it's not painted yet, great you know, grind that down, round it off, and paint it normally because when you paint it normally, it's going to give it a natural round edge around your rounded edge that you sanded. But if it's already painted, metal and it's already painted, um, you could actually put a little piece of a JB Weld bridge up and over there as well. Now you only need a small little bit up over the top to give it a rounded edge. And once again, the sides, pull the tape, let it come over and kind of mold itself straight down and round off. Or you can take some IPA and rubbing alcohol and smooth down the edges around the corner of a, of a metal um, piece that's already painted. Now what this is going to do is it's going to allow um, the system to last much, much longer. It's going to be brighter because it's going to get the proper voltage, the proper current it needs to be supported and um, allow it to go in and out of the system and not be caught up in a fault line um, or a fuse somewhere. So your system will be brighter. It's going to last longer. And the best thing is you get to have peace of mind when you're troubleshooting the system. If <clears throat> the problem, a problem happens and you know for a fact that you took care of these areas, rounded the edges, off on, the, on your wraparounds, make sure that you um, took care of your JB Weld patches and all that smooth. If something happens to your system, you know for a fact that those areas are not the problems anymore. So that's one good thing about taking care of this beforehand and knowing what to take care of beforehand and knowing what could be a problem. Um, it's going to make you feel more confident in longer lasting light ups. Um, know for a fact that it's not going to burn out because I know when I first started doing this and you go to light it up and you know there's so many different things you don't know about the system and it burns out or something happens it turns off you don't know what happened you have to go through and troubleshoot um, but now having these little um, tips and tricks you know for a fact you can be more confident in having your system last a very long time and know that it's not going to burn out for whatever reason that you can't even possibly think of 
basically a, a recap of this. Um, your Lumilor system can have weak points in it. It can have fault lines or fuses that can burn if not applied properly. And the places that they can happen are around edges, JB well patches, um, any places that have um, different raised ridges and you're trying to paint up over that, anything like that, those can be um, faults in the system and can easily be fixed or um, taken care of beforehand by easily sanding edges or flattening JB well patches. I'm Pete from Paint With Light and we're going to be having plenty more videos coming out on the Lumilor system in our Lumilor A to Z series. So please comment, like, and share. And as always, we'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching.